Welcome everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in for another video today. We are lucky enough to have a lots of test products come through here at the Lone Wolf and you've probably noticed that we spend a lot of time riding in different products and sometimes you might see lots of products stick around for a long period of time. Today I've got five pairs of shoes behind me, four of them I love and one pair I don't. So let's get into it. All right, so this review is gonna be focused around clipless pedal shoes. So sorry, flat pedal riders, you'll have to wait for another video there. Um, but today we're gonna to be looking more at that aggressive trail enduro to DH style of clipless shoe. I'm gonna start out in no particular order um, with the Bontrager Rally shoes, um, probably because it's the shoe that I've had the longest and ridden the most. You could tell this thing's probably a little worse for wear. Um, and we started riding these shoes, I think two years ago, that was the first time we'd ever ridden them, actually three years ago, when they sponsored our e-bike shootout um, in Palm Springs. And our whole crew got sets of these shoes. And I think everybody actually was really stoked. Uh, a couple of the big guys, like size 12 and 13, uh, I think broke the shank uh, after six months to a year in. Um, I believe Bontrager said they made some revisions to those larger size shoes and they sent other ones out and I don't think it happened again. Um, I have got a size 10.5 in this shoe and I find it to be a pretty good and true size. I've had no problems. I've had two pairs of these because I liked them so much. Um, as you can see, this is the second pair and I've ridden them this, this much. So uh, let's get into some of the details. Reinforced heel and toe uh, for abrasion resistance. Um, they've got a padded EVA insole, um, a pretty decent rubber compound here for traction on and off the bike. Lay system with a Velcro closure. Something that's really neat is Bontrager has a 30 day satisfaction guarantee so if you if you get the shoes you're riding them a little bit or they just don't fit you and you're not happy you can reach out to Bontrager and uh, they will get you sorted there so right now these shoes are on sale for 145 bucks and uh, weight wise they come in at 458 grams a piece uh, which makes them the second lightest shoe in this review but um, overall if you couldn't tell, I absolutely love these shoes. Um, I've ridden them a lot and I've been very happy overall. So next up, we'll move over to the Shimano AM903s. Um, I lovingly called these my disco slippers. Uh, some weird fancy purple, blue color changing stuff. Um, not my favorite looking shoe color wise. And this is kind of funky uh, as well, but one of my favorite shoes to ride in uh, from a comfort standpoint, these things are awesome. From a performance standpoint, they're awesome. Um, yeah, they do make a black one, uh, but for those who want a little more flair, maybe to match your oil slick uh, bike components, there you go, nice color. Uh, so what makes these things so special is that they've got this kind of armored covered lace system. Um, it is a I don't know, I wouldn't call it a maybe kind of a quick lace, but you, it's like a draw up lace. What I like is that you can cinch each individual setting up to get a pretty solid feel. And then you slide this down by pinching that and slide it down to the bottom. You can tuck that up underneath and then you've got this armored cover and then your next little lace strap. It, it helps keep a lot of crap from going in the shoe, which is really nice. Um, you know, albeit a, a weird look, but it does do what it's supposed to. Um, I also like this higher inside here, offers a little bit of protection as the crank arm or the frame. Uh, these shoes I found ran a little bit on the big side. I, I'm wearing a 44 in these, whereas the Bontrager was a 44 and a half. And I am typically like a 10 and a half, uh, like in vans, I'll wear a 10 and a half. So um, I opted to go down to a 44 and got a really good fit out of that. As far as tech goes, they've got a quick dry upper. Uh, with this armored lace shield. Uh, Shimano also gave them some improved rubber compound and uh, tread pattern for good grip on and off the bike, as well as a, a pretty decent 
channel length here. It's definitely not as long as some of the other shoes that you'll notice in the review, but um, it still gives you a decent amount of adjustability, but that is something that I would like to see improved on this shoe. Uh, from a comfort standpoint though, again, they offer a good blend of, of performance without being overly stiff or rough. Um, as you can see, they're not the most flexiest, but they're also not totally stiff. So a uh, solid shoe, one I definitely recommend. Um, as far as weight and price, these are currently on sale for $127.50. They're normally 170 bucks and uh, the weight is 485 grams per shoe. So next up, we'll move into the Liat 6.0. Um, this is uh, also a really awesome shoe. I did say that these there's four shoes I love, right? Um, so these shoes, another shoe I don't really love the look of. They're a little too, I don't know, XC for me, but uh, gosh, they are comfortable. They're quick and easy to get in and out of. I don't have to lace them. Like I see the benefits here, okay? Um, I guess... I'm just a little too concerned with style, but uh, nevertheless, these shoes got a lot of use. They're a size 10, um, which again, I think I'm usually a 10 and a half or a 10. So this is a little bit on the big side. So you, if you're on that cusp like I am, you may want to size down, um, but uh, overall pretty comfortable and solid shoe. One of the criticisms I had of the shoe is that it was starting to peel apart here. Um, a little bit on the rear, not, not a ton, but more so around the toe. These were starting to kind of come off of the shoes upper. Um, other than that though, they've held up for a really long time and, uh, we'll kind of walk you through some of the tech and features of that shoe. Uh, their a top lacing system, uh, similar to what you would consider, I guess, or call a boa lace system. Um, it is a pretty breathable upper, which is really nice. There's also, um, extra TPU added around the toe and heel, as well as some textured abrasion resistant material. So, um, you know, although this is kind of thinner and more breathable, like mesh style material, that TPU around the toe and heel really helps keep the shoe, you know, a little bit tougher in those kind of high wear areas. Um, this shoe also has Liat's Control Flex Shank. Uh, for a, a semi-rigid feel is what they call it. The 6.0s also have an EVA insole and midsole. Um, it's an anti-compression EVA uh, insole, so it's designed to absorb impacts, uh, vibration, and chatter. And I would say that it definitely makes a difference, and it is something I notice in shoes that have EVA, right? This isn't the only brand to do it, but on shoes that don't have it, um, I can tell when it's not there. So um, I, I was pretty surprised, actually, um, that it's not just a marketing gimmick, that that stuff actually does make a difference. So uh, that is the Liat 6.0. This shoe weighs in at 518 grams a piece, and they are currently on sale for $119. Uh, normally 160 so definitely a shoe I'd recommend looking at if you're not wanting to go quite so into that aggressive lacy skate style shoe but um, yeah that's the Liat 6.0 okay so I've got two left the Liat 5.0 or the Fox Union I'm gonna go let's go with the Liat 5.0s next keep you guys in suspense on that Fox Union shoe um, so the 5.0 is there's, I guess you would call it a little more casual skate inspired shoe. Um, it also kind of features that lace system that you can cinch down. Then it has a tri strap, which um, is cool in theory. I guess it's sort of cool in practice as well, um, but it's a little bit of a pain, um, especially if you undo this strap all the way to get your foot in and out, which you don't have to do because um, you can still get it to open. But I found that it's just, it's pretty tight to get that Velcro strap back through this upper. Um, it's just a real tight fit. And also the downside to this long lay system is after you get your shoe tied, um, you still have a lot of this material around, which they did put like this little elastic cuff here that you can tie or cinch that up into, but sometimes that could interfere with where you cinch that Velcro down. Um, I just, I don't, I don't love it for a, a couple of different reasons. Um, also I found in uh, a, 
a very, very limited few number of bikes, uh, or I should say cranks, that this little buckle area would rub, um, depending on my cleat position and how much my foot was canted kind of in or out. But um, like I said, that was really rare. I think it was only one set of cranks out of like probably 50 different bikes I rode. Um, so moving on from that, getting into some of the tech of that 5.0 shoe. Um, it has the ride grip compound. Um, this features 10K, 10K Hydra dry material, uh, making it really nice for splashing through puddles, light rain, creek crossings. Um, also strategically placed TPU for durability, a, a fairly breathable shoe for kind of this style of shoe, I would say. Um, Liette does a really good job of having a, a pretty sizable track or a channel for you to run that cleat. So if you like to shove it real far down there in the back, you've got plenty of room to do so. And so this shoe also has the Control Flex shank in it. Where the shoe differs to my beloved 6.0 is that it does not have the um, padded EVA insole or midsole. Um, and that I think is what makes all the difference for this shoe. Um, I regularly would get uh, just tired, sore, kind of achy feet on long descents. The arch of my foot would get just fatigued um, and it would just generally make the bike feel and a little bit harsher and stiffer and it would make me feel just more tired because of that lack of damping, right? Um, so for that reason, this is the shoe I do not love, uh, the 5.0. I think there are a lot of good shoes in the Liat lineup. Um, I really do believe that uh, that EVA insole and midsole make a huge difference in comfort, especially on long descents or big days. Uh, so the weight on this one is 561 grams per shoe, making it uh, definitely on the heavier side. And it is also on sale right now for $104. So um, a fairly affordable shoe, just a bit on the heavy side and not the most comfortable. Um, so that brings us to the Fox Union. Um, you might remember we did dissected on this a long time ago, six months when they came out. Um, We've been riding in these a lot. Uh, I think we had eight pairs of these sent out to the crew um, and most of the guys have continued to wear them ever since. Uh, I have the lace version here. I also have the double boa, boa version, which I also really like. Um, I just unfortunately left them at a friend's house far away, um, which is all right, because I really do think I would probably be wearing the lace version more often just because I like the way it looks better. Uh, but no problems with the boas. I do like them and it is very fast and easy. Uh, but one thing I will say, a lot of times lace up shoes, um, being that we are mountain bikers and we are in the dirt, lace up shoes can sometimes be a major pain in the ass. Like if they get dirty, muddy, sweat, powder, you know, dirt dries up and it just makes it pulling the laces through the holes really hard. Um, and one thing I will notice is that um, even with eight months plus of use, six to eight months of use in everything from like swampy wet mud to really dry desert sand and powder, um, I can still pull these laces through very effortlessly. So whether I'm like loosening them quickly to get my foot in or pulling it up tight um, to lace up, they slide through nice and that is a huge thing. I've, I'm sure all of you guys have tested shoes and ridden in shoes where it just, the longer you have them, the harder it gets to adjust the laces and that's pretty frustrating. So uh, props to Fox for getting the size of that hole just right. Um, so let's get into some of the details on the Union. So the Fox Union shoes retail for $179, uh, making them the most expensive shoe in our test. And they also weigh in at 445 grams per shoe. Uh, I should say all of these shoes have been weighed with cleats installed, um, but uh, yeah, it is the lightest shoe in the group test. And uh, I'd say one of the more comfortable for sure. So um, they use an UltraTac outsole here, uh, does a solid job of giving grip on and off the bike. Um, it is fairly stiff, I will say. So um, side hill walking, 
or really steep climbs where it's kind of hard pack or loose over hard. The, it's not so much, I'd say the rubber compound, but maybe the stiffness that kind of makes it, you know, you gotta be a little bit more cautious of that foot placement. It's not terrible by any means, like, and it's not even bad, I would say, like it's good, it's just not the best, or I wish it were just a little better. Um, and I, I really think ultimately what I would like is maybe just a little bit more compliance out of the shoe um, than anything. I think the rubber compound's fine, especially for a clipless shoe. The Fox Union has a very low profile fit overall. The, the Velcro strap is thin and minimal, um, you know, especially like kind of compared to that, that Bontrager Rally. Um, it is just a little bit of a thinner, streamlined shoe. It's just like, a, it's a very refined shoe for this style. Uh, the material they use is really nice. It is a one piece upper that is welded down. So it's impressively weather resistant. Um, you know, it's not a water shoe or rain shoe. It's perforated and has, you know, breathable holes in it. But um, I remember our first ride out in these was in some snow and mud and slush. Uh, and then for the e-bike shootout where we were riding these in like horrible torrential conditions, um, these bikes do, or sorry, <laughs> these shoes do a, a rather good job of holding up. Fox gives the shoe a molded internal heel cup, which is nice, helps keep that foot in place uh, in all but the steepest of hike a bike conditions where I said that stiffness kind of still had my toe pulling up, but you could cinch down that Velcro and uh, it'll keep your foot in place nicely under normal pedaling conditions. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Fox uses a lightweight nylon shank for stiffness and power transfer. Uh, another nice thing about these Fox shoes is that they've got um, exchangeable arch supports uh, and they ship the shoes with different arch supports. So depending on if you've got you know high, low, or flat, you can uh, tune the shoes a little bit. Uh, Fox also gives the shoe a very stiff molded toe and heel cap. I would probably say of all the shoes here, the stiffest, maybe that Liat 5.0 might be a rival, but um, from a heel and especially toe, like it comes up over the front, almost like a steel toe. Um, this is definitely a shoe I would want to hit a rock or a root with head on if I if I had to pick one. Um, so definitely some, some good engineering there. The track on these is not quite as long as the Liat's, but I found it to be plenty long enough to get those cleats back. Robert, who's one of our other testers, he said he wished he could have gone a little bit lower, but I think he's wearing like a size 12 or 12 and a half, um, and he really likes to run his stuff all the way back. So um, that could be something to consider overall, but uh, two thumbs up for the, the Fox Union shoe all around. Um, definitely enjoyable shoe. So if I had to pick a favorite, um, it'd be a tough answer for me and I would really start going into the weeds on my favorite for performance and wearing or my favorite for looks. Um, I think for looks, Bontrager, Rally, and Fox Union are gonna be high on my list just because they kind of have that that low stated look and style about them. Um, they are plenty great when it comes to performance. Um, I think the Bontragers might be a little bit more comfortable. Um, I like a shoe that has just a little bit of flex and give to it, especially for long descents. Um, but I really, really like the Fox Unions and I wear them a ton. Now, the Shimano shoes here are just super rad all around. And again, I don't love the looks of them, but from a performance standpoint, like there's no denying these things are performance minded shoes and they're rad. And the same can be said for the Liat 6.0. So um, really for me, I could get in any one of those shoes and be happy and uh, totally stoked on them. It's really gonna come down to look and style for me. Uh, so I know your look and style could be totally different and you might love the way these look or how those Shimano set up. So um, have at it, enjoy. Please ask any questions down below. Be happy to respond and give my input on anything I missed or some input from the other guys on the crew who've also ridden in many of these same shoes. Uh, one last request, if you guys wouldn't mind, please subscribe to the channel if you don't already, because we'd love to see you back in future videos. Thanks very much, and we'll see you out on the trails.